Well, good evening again, YouTube. Um, following my blockbuster uh, review, highly successful, um, 12 hits so far on YouTube, uh, following my review of the EJ, the Epiphone EJ200 uh, CE, which you'll find elsewhere on my channel, uh, I did promise, um, as that review was geared towards helping someone make a buying decision around that particular guitar. Um, that would, I would also share with you uh, a review of the um, hard case I ended up buying to protect my new investment, uh, made by Hiscox, uh, H-I-S-C-O-X, Hiscox. They're, um, they're based down south in England, I think it's Luton area, I'm not sure now, check the website, they're a very good website actually. Um, I wanted to show you this, which is the, the Hiscox Light Flight Pro 2 case, uh, specifically designed for the Gibson J200 and therefore fits the EJ200 like a glove um, and would fit both the acoustic and the electrified version of the EJ200. Um, and I'll show you uh, how it fits in just a moment. Um, I have to say, I've paid, uh, when I first got the, the EJ200, uh, I rung up just to get the, um, the Epiphone hard case for it, and thankfully the store, the online store that I rung, um, uh, were out of stock of the particular Epiphone case, and the, the sales, the uh, sales fellow on the phone said to me, and to be quite honest, even if it, if it was in stock, I would be advising you against it. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, there's only one case I would trust for any of my guitars, and that's a Hiscox case. Um, he said, incidentally, we don't have any of those in stock either at the moment, um, so I'm not trying to lay it on you because uh, they are a little bit more expensive than your standard hard case, but worth every single penny. So I thanked him for the advice and got off the phone and then uh, did a quick Google and uh, found a supplier in England, um, again down south of uh, Hiscox cases. You can't buy them directly from Hiscox, you have to buy them from, um, from authorised uh, sellers. And I found a place that was selling this particular case for, uh, what was it, about seven, eighty, ninety sterling something like that yeah it was about 20 pound between 10 and 20 pound dearer than the epiphone hard case uh, for that particular guitar so i took a bit of a punt and uh, i bought it um, i have a lot of hard cases for my guitars uh, all of them with it, uh, except for this one are the conventional uh, plywood i guess it is covered in the black leather material with the furry interior and all the rest of it um, and this was an absolute revelation, I have to say, uh, yes, a little bit more expensive than the standard cases that you get, um, but worth, in my humble opinion, every single penny. First thing that strikes you about the case um, uh, is when you pick it up, just how light it is. True to the name, Light Flight Pro 2, um, which I think this one... I, I think if you check on the Hiscox website, my memory of this now is there's the there's a basic case, then there's a middle of the range case, and then there's a top of the range case, and I think the only difference in them all is one or two features, but also the crush testing is a little bit more on the upper end cases. This particular case will take uh, about half a ton before it um, buckles. In fact, if you look at the um, Hiscox video on the website which is very good, it shows you exactly how these are made and all the great features that I'm going to just skim the surface with now, um, but the video begins with I think five or six of their staff standing on the case with a guitar in it, just to demonstrate how, how tough these things are. So that, yeah, back to what I was saying, the first thing that strikes you about this is the um, just how light it is when you pick it up, you're expecting uh, when you look at it, it's quite a big case because it's a quite a big guitar. Uh, but you're expecting the kind of the the weight of it when you pick it up to to be familiar with what you know, 
with the with the normal hard case and when you actually go to pick it up it kind of comes up quite <laughs> it, it took me by surprise it was so light um, really 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 well made i have to say in my opinion really well made um, it's like a black um, a grainy um, what, what would you call it like a matte plasticky type material um, the the front of the case there has a slight indent cut out there and then another one the whole way around the edge here and then the underside of the um, of the case has uh, three three grooves running the length of the running running across the width of the case all the way down the length. So you've got one here. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this. Uh, one here and one here. These are sort of raised, which would act as as feet, I suppose. Uh, if you were to lie it down, uh, there's there's a sort of a bit of a squared off in this end, and then on this end here, which you would normally lean it down. Uh, there's one. Uh, two, three rubber, uh, hard rubber feet. Um, a really sturdy black plastic uh, handle which is riveted into the, um, into the body of the case here. And then here and here on the bottom are some uh, D-ring type things for a, a strap if you wanted to fit a strap to it. I'm not planning on doing that but uh, if you wanted to, the option is there. Um, apparently you can tell a genuine Hiscox case because of this nameplate here that is also riveted to the uh, to the shell. Hiscox Light Flight Pro 2, that says on it. And then you have these clasps the whole way around. Again, very, very different to the clasps that I'm used to on a standard style hard case. Very, very um, sturdy uh, clasps with a, with a very sort of tight spring in them. That, um, that that gives you a lot of resistance when you're pulling it up. They just feel really, really sturdy and well made. Um, and one of the things I learned when I was watching the Hiscox video on the website, um, one of the features of this particular case, why it's a step up from your average case, is because unlike um, other cases, um, which may or may not have this sort of aluminium valance or trim strip around the edge, um, the clasps and other fittings are riveted or screwed into the um, into the, the body of the case. Um, whereas on this particular case, the aluminium valance, whilst the bit you can see is only that wide, inside behind uh, behind that and inside the case, you can't see it inside because of the lining. But the aluminium valance is actually a couple of inches wide. The whole way around, and every single uh, piece of hardware on the outside of, uh, edge of this case is riveted to that aluminium valance hidden on the inside. So a lot, lot stronger, a lot less likely to break off or or, uh, or be pulled loose or work loose over time, I guess. Um, I suppose I'll take you inside the case now. I'm going to lift the camera up for this bit, so it's going to get a bit wobbly for a second, but hopefully. Uh, Bear with me and that'll calm down. I'm just going to lay it down flat over there. I'm going to open it up, show you the inside, and then uh, put the guitar in it so you can see just how snugly and how well it fits. But um, uh, just bear with me for a second because I'm on my own doing this, so I can't really cut the video very easily. Right then, so um, starting at this end, three. Four on the end, and then another one here. That's what's that five all together. And opening the case. No! That happens every time I open it. I don't know why it does that, but um, you can see it's got this sort of um, chic pimp uh, red velour type um, interior. Um, this thing here is a sort of a, a, squ a squishy pad that. Um, I'd imagine it's fixed on with glue or Velcro or something. There's another one uh, here. And um, there's more uh, here, here, here. Oh, sorry, there is it there. Here and here. And you can actually order them with extra pads if you've got a particular 
custom fit type arrangement that you want uh, to to uh, uh, to take advantage of. So you've got the standard um, uh, compartment here to put your spare strings, picks, tuners, whatever. And this one's actually quite a large um, and um, not long and thin like they normally are. It's actually more square shaped, uh, so quite large. And you've got this little tab here that helps um, when it's closed, helps you helps you pick it up. The lining on this case, um, like the outside really, is very unique in that if you watch the video you'll see exactly what I mean, but the, the, the thing behind this, which is actually feels quite firm, you can press it in with your thumb, but it's, it's not polystyrene, um, it's quite firm. The, the lining behind the red velour is bonded to the shell of the case as part of the manufacturing process. So it's actually all one piece and then the velour stuff, the red stuff, is in turn bonded to that. So there's no sort of bit sticking up anywhere or peeling off or anything like that. It's all um it's all one piece. The shell, the shock absorbing liner, and the velour is all one piece, so it's all sort of one unit, uh, which adds to the feeling of it being uh, very sturdy. You have three hinges on it, uh, one here, one here, and one here. And then you have a black um, strap here just to hold the lid from swinging the whole way back whenever it's open. Um, the other thing I kind of liked about the case when I watched the, the video of how they're made is um, the shock absorbing properties of the case. First of all, compared to a standard hard case and the demonstration on the video was him holding a piece of plywood up and hitting uh, in his hand and then hitting it with a hammer. And that shock is transformed, um, tr sorry, transferred the whole way through the wood and onto your hand and makes it quite sore. Uh, doesn't absorb any of the shock at all, really, just passes it directly through and onto whatever's underneath. And in the case of a guitar case, that, that would be your guitar. Um, and then he compared it to the material that this is made out of, some kind of polypropylene, I'm not really sure. Check the website. Um, did the same thing with a hammer and hardly felt anything on his hand. Um, suggesting that the the um, shock of the impact was absorbed by the material rather than it passing straight through to whatever's inside so that's quite encouraging and um, the second thing that I liked about the demonstration on the videos was the um, uh, the uh, the what, what would you call the climate control inside the case so in other words um, the it, it, it has an insulating property that helps guard your, a natural insulating property that helps guard your uh, guitar inside the case against uh, e extreme temperature changes or humidity levels changing outside the case. Uh, and again, there's demonstrations on the Hiscox uh, video on the website about how this actually operates. They put probes inside and measure the temperatures and compare them to normal cases and all that. So that's good as well for a for a guitar that's made out of wood and is very sensitive to uh, climate and humidity and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to show you now how the guitar goes in. Um, the only thing is I'm doing this one-handed because I'm, I'm <laughs> and it is a very snug fit and I have a strap fitted onto the guitar so uh, it does go in with the strap still attached but um, needs really two hands so I'm going to um, I'm actually going to just leave it there for a second while I sort this camera out. Sorry YouTube for the wobbly video. It's a bit... Um... Right, here we go. There. Now, sorry about that. But there need two hands to this, so... The... Um... I don't know how I did this, actually. The strap... Um... Last time I did this, I don't put it in the case very often, actually. I just pulled the strap up like that. There's a groove here where the pin, uh, where the strap pin fits, so that's cut out already. That's pre-cut, um, and you can feel it sort of. Uh, you can hear it very lightly just squeaking as it fits in, which is where these four sort of cushion bits come into their own because they sort of grip it as it goes in. Um, so you can actually. Uh, they do compress to allow the guitar to slide in, but once it's in, it's held really, really snugly, I have to say. Um, and then the, um, obviously the, the lid closure then, and then, then I'm not going to do up all the clasps the whole way around, but you can see, I'm going to just uh, bring the camera over, so you can see 
um, just how well that fits in there. And as I said, it's designed, um, the case is designed for the Gibson J200, but as the Epiphone EJ200 has exactly the same dimensions, then clearly it's going to fit. And if you have just the plain acoustic version of this particular guitar, obviously the only difference in body shape is you don't have this cut out here. So the shoulder of the guitar is going to come across like that. So clearly it will still fit. You've loads of room here. Uh, it will just, it will just come across like this here and all the way around so that, that will fit either the electric version or the uh, or the plain acoustic version. Um, so there we go, the Hiscox case, look it up on their website uh, for all the features, do watch the video because it's quite interesting and um, I have to be honest, um, if I'd have known about Hiscox cases when I was buying hard cases for one of my other guitars and I could have afforded it, I would have got these Hiscox cases for all of them because they're um, they're far, far superior, in my opinion, to the um, the manufacturer's own standard hard cases. Um, and they're lighter, they're more robust, uh, and I wouldn't hesitate to put that guitar in the baggage hold of an aeroplane in that particular case. Uh, and I would be um, totally happy that it would emerge the other side of the flight unscathed and probably still in tune. So. Um, there you go, that's the Hiscox hard case, the Light Flight, um, the Light Flight Pro 2, I think that says, yeah, Light Flight Pro 2 case, specifically designed for the Gibson J200 or Epiphone EJ200 or 200CE. Again, I hope you found the review helpful, and um, I'll catch you later. Cheers.